So, a little backstory. This happened about four months ago. I had just finished an 11 hour shift and I needed to stop at Home Depot to get a new drill. I just wanted to run in, buy it, run out, and get home. Of course, it wasn't that easy. I had just gone to the drills and I was looking over the options in my price range when I hear it. I hear, um, excuse me, where are the wax toilet rings? Now, there was a few other people in the area, so I ignore it, assuming there's another employee inside. Now, it's important to add that as I work in traffic control and on the job site, I'm wearing high visibility caps. A high visibility vest that says my company name and traffic control in the back, a radio with a shoulder mic, and I have a traffic control technician certification card displayed on my vest. The employees here wear orange aprons and normal clothes. Again, I hear, hello. Do you want to do your job or just stand there looking at tools? At this point, I glanced around to see what was going on. I assumed that some customer was berating an employee, which does happen a lot in this location due to where I live and the people who live here. I was surprised, however, to see some. That was a bad idea. Now, I'm not a skilled fighter and I'm not super strong or anything, but at that point, I'm adrenaline hit. So I punched him square in the nose and he fell back, hitting his head on the concrete ground. Someone called the police. This guy just attacked me. The crowd nearby grew larger and larger, and I was worried. Obviously, it was in self defense, but I kept thinking that I should have struck him down and not punched him. And I was worried that if he hit his head to the point that it caused a lot of damage, that I could get in trouble. So of course, the manager comes over and asks what's going on. The guy then starts screaming, This employee attacked me, and I tried to ask for simple directions. Look what he did. By this point, blood is still on the spot he did along with the blood pouring out of both of his nostrils. The manager was puzzled and said, who did? Looking around at actual employees, who were still on their way over to the commotion. The guy screaming, oh my god, are you guys all this stupid? Him, pointing to me. Um, he doesn't work here, sir, the manager said. The manager then gets on the radio for more employees, ignoring the man's insistence that I did, and tells me to follow him. He takes me to the security office and has me wait for police. Luckily, multiple customers and the camera saw my side of the story. And since the police went to the injured person first to render aid, they also interviewed witnesses over there before coming to me. When they came in, I gave my side of the story. The police say it contradicts his version of the event, but it matches the witnesses' statements. They say the guy was telling that he wanted to be arrested and locked up. And that's when the manager pulled up the hood, which showed him things like that and showing it. And I only hit him after that. Also, in my favor was the fact that I was facing him with a drill shell behind me when he shot me. was so much more I ended up pressing charges since he wanted to get me arrested. They arrested him, and a few months later, I found out that he pled guilty and avoided jail time. But now he's got an assault charge for the record. I honestly wouldn't have pressed charges if it wasn't for the fact that he wanted to press charges against me. I hope he learned his lesson and doesn't treat anybody that way again. You can have a whole people in court. Uh, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys are happy that Kofi did press charges, as that's often how these people learn not to do that in the future. Guys, I'm all for self-defense, but when Kofi wrote that he punched that man in the nose, causing him to fall to the ground, bashing his head on the concrete, that could have ended terribly for both parties.
coins, I've had more than my bill. I watched construction on a pipeline for a power plant, which is a
we knuckle up. <laughs> Not your house. Look at these 
probably give it anyway. Until he spots my man at the dockyards with little reserve signs in her hand. She walks over to my station, checks the diary, and walks over to each empty table and places a reserve sign on each one, and then walks back over to the station. She then tells him, I'm sorry this is not you, sir. I have now rectified it. I see we have a free table tomorrow evening at the same time. If you'd like to come back then, make it and turn the most beautiful shade of red that you've ever seen in your life, and stated that he'll sit at the bar and wait to see what the other cancels. After walking to the bar, the birthday table at eight walks in. Big idiot pops and begging his family to leave, at which point my manager calls out, If you'd like that table for tomorrow, please give us a call. Have a nice evening. Oh, sweet, sweet Carmen. Guys, that manager handled the situation perfectly. Like, what do the guy expect? Showing up on a Saturday night with eight people without a reservation, expecting to be seated is crazy. I hope he and his family enjoyed their dinner at McDonald's that night. So, my compliance was malicious for the ex-husband. I work at a billing queue at a call center for one of the big three telecoms, and a client calls in regarding a billing concern. So, when this lady calls in, she's puzzled by why she got charged a one-time fee of $49 for a wireless access fee. She's even more puzzled why she would even have that charge when she doesn't even have TV services for us. I inform her that she does, and it started more or less a month ago. She's disputing that because Optic TV isn't available in her area. Now I'm confused. The woman lives in a small town, but there's no Optic TV there. So I do a little digging and find out that someone's still on her account. I got a three year contract to get a free TV for Optic TV and internet. The woman then begins to cry on the phone. She tells me her now ex husband had an affair with a younger woman. Then he divorced her and milked her for as much as he could, and apparently still milking her for more. Uh, I only wish I could see a surprise when he calls in and a customer service rep tells him, I'm sorry sir, we can't give you information about this account as you're not an authorized person. And hey, I really hope she gets that free TV rerouted to her instead. But what a scum guy. Your match to zero from Gloria Ferris. Nice game, but better. Scummy guy. Mm-hmm. 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 Extra hot. 
Now the gravy's already hot, and there's no way to heat it up more without burning it or microwaving it. And if it goes in the microwave, the gravy gets ready and the sandwich gets soggy as a result. So usually we just bring it to her as is. So one day she comes in, and on this day, my new manager, who's the owner's daughter, is working in the kitchen with one of her other cooks. It's my turn to take the table, so I do. And she's rude, and she owes what she always does. But I guess today, she wants her gravy extra, extra hot. So after I turn around to put the order in the kitchen window, she gets up to follow me. She then comes up to the window, yells at the cooks and says, Hi, you guys have never had the gravy hot enough. I want my gravy so hot that it burns my mouth. She then smiles and goes and sits back down. Now, we're all taken aback. And it is a family restaurant, and there's other customers. I'm embarrassed after being shoved to the side, so I go back in the kitchen to process what just happened. My manager is not having this. She says, don't worry, I'm taking care of it. A few minutes later, she had to an oven bit to carry up the lady's plate. The gravy is practically steamed at this point, and I'm sure my manager microwaved the gravy right. probably yeah. a chance or more. I don't know what a handful of time to she also went back to the restaurant to eat a few times, but she's still demanding, but a little less. I do feel bad that she got hurt, but also, I feel like she, A, asked for it, and B, probably shouldn't have shoved visibly steaming gravy into her mouth. Guys, you know what they say, justice is a dish best served. Hey, if you're a grown-up, but you can't tell that something is that hot, you need to let it cool down, you deserve it. <laughs> and this is also coming from someone who regularly burns their mouth on hot pizza every single time. The cheese gets me every time. Challenge the past. Challenge accepted. Purdue University Global. Affordable online education for children and adults. Apply now at a year before COVID hit the U.S., I started working for one of the major U.S. airlines at the local airport as a baggage handler. I absolutely loved the job. I just enjoyed being around planes from the ground level. When I started there, there was no full-time positions available, so I was pretty much like getting stuck somewhere. Supervisors are being told to cut costs everywhere, which makes sense, given the circumstances. Queue up the night of my malicious compliance. It's maybe 11 p.m., and I'm on until 1 a.m. Supervisors have sent a large chunk of workers home, and those of us left are being sent all over the airport to cover the flights we do have coming. I get a call from the office that assigns your flight.